In this episode, you're going to see the scariest videos that are trending right now. Let's take a look. We're trying to deal with this. TikTok user Mara Johnson Designs recently posted a spine-chilling clip that's leaving viewers buzzing with questions. While Mara and her business partner were loading up a truck for a trade show in Las Vegas, they heard something truly unsettling. Take a look. Honestly, this is coming from the dream. Okay. That's some creepy word. Strange sounds could be heard drifting up from the depths below. <laughs> Mara and her business partner were left bewildered, unable to pinpoint any logical explanation for the bizarre noises. This is coming from the dream. So what could be making these eerie sounds in the Vegas drains? The mystery remains, and until an answer is found, viewers will be left wondering what Mara and her partner really encountered in the depths below. Honestly, this is coming from the dream. Okay. That's some creepy word. Did you know we have a dedicated shorts channel? It's called Slaptam Shorts, it's daily spooky content. Head on over, we'll put some links in the description box down below and it's pinned in the comments there. Watch a couple of the clips and hit subscribe, then you're bound to see us in your feed every single day of the week with fresh spooky content. Absolutely stunning. Yes. Delicious. <laughs> it's so Recently, Reddit user Jaded Wafer6499 posted a compilation video titled The Demonic Possession of Kenneth Copeland. The video features snippets of televangelist Kenneth Copeland known for his fiery preaching style. But here, his expressions and gestures appear to be distorted in a way some viewers find deeply unsettling. The more the more we learn about this, this covenant of God, <laughs> Don't ever do it. Don't ever feel sorry for yourself. Don't ever do it! This continues for some time. And we have a healing covenant. <laughs> what blood? The blood of this covenant! Glory to God! <laughs> some viewers believe he looks demonic. Dwells in me. The pure spotless blood of God and Hesed was performed for me. The video has reignited discussions about the concept of false idols and the belief that, in times of moral and spiritual confusion, darker forces might infiltrate religious institutions. This notion of demonic possession or spiritual corruption in figures of authority is a topic that resonates with a long-standing religious caution against following so-called false prophets, who might be motivated by personal gain or deception rather than genuine faith. Kenneth Copeland, a prominent figure in the world of televangelism, has amassed a significant following and a considerable fortune over the years leading some critics to view him as a controversial figure. Oh, 120 years and said, yeah, 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 preach it, brother, preach it, brother, preach it. Ah, who do you think you are today? Ultimately, the clip has brought the topic of spiritual authenticity and caution to the forefront, reminding viewers of the importance of staying grounded in their own beliefs. The more the more we learn about this, this covenant of God, I'm thinking I must be in the hospital in real life. I must have had some sort of a reaction. Yeah. In a deeply surreal experience that challenges the boundaries of reality and perception, Steve Cantwell recounted a salvia trip that seemed to pull him out of one life and drop him into an entirely new one. What started as a light-hearted experiment to entertain a friend on leave turned into a journey Cantwell would never forget. One that questioned everything he knew about time and memory. Like right now, worried that what's going on, worried that I'm in a coma, did I die, is this limbo? 
you know, because I'm a very... Cantwell, a devoted family man and member of the Mormon church in Alaska, mistakenly purchased salvia, thinking it was synthetic marijuana. On Christmas Day, while his children played with their new toys and his wife prepared dinner, he tried it. Little did he know that a single hit would lead him to experience what felt like eight years in another life. As Cantwell inhaled, the world around him began to dissolve. I hit the bowl piece with the with a micro torch and just took the biggest hit that I could possibly do. I Suddenly, he felt himself pulled in what he could only describe as a swirling tunnel. The floor, and the best way to describe it is I felt like my molecules and the molecules in the floor no longer had anything to do with each other. When he finally surfaced, it wasn't in his Alaskan home. Instead, he found himself on the deck of a small boat, gasping for air under the bright Texas sun. I found myself on the, on the, on the deck of this little water skiing boat, coughing up water, and there were a bunch of guys surrounded me on the, on the deck of this water ski boat. As he regained his senses, he realised he was surrounded by three unfamiliar faces who expressed both relief and concern. I didn't know any of these guys, but they all seemed to know me and they thought that I'd been water skiing and that I was this different person. I looked down and I looked slightly different, but it's hard to tell. They acted as if they had known him his entire life, making small jokes and referencing shared childhood memories that didn't exist for him. Baffled and unsettled, Canwell told him he was from Alaska and that he had no idea who they were or where he was. I'm telling all of these guys that none of this is real and that I'm having a salvia trip and I'm, you know, I'm in uh, witness protection in Alaska and I'm in my friend's basement and it's Christmas time. His newfound friends, concerned about his mental state, took him to a clinic in Tyler, Texas, a place he had never been. The truck and they drive me to this urgent care facility where I go in and they tell the doctor they're like, hey, our friend was water skiing with us. You know, he fell off his board and was floating face down, probably had his face underwater for about three minutes. And now he doesn't remember any of us. At the clinic, a doctor examined him thoroughly, diagnosing him with what they call medical amnesia. So they turn lights in my eyes. and They just do all of this, the rudimentary things to make listen to my lungs. And the, the doctor said, well, he's fine medically. And true medical amnesia is he'll probably remember everything by morning. They reassured him that his memory would likely return in just a few days, but Cantwell felt a growing dread. It was just supposed to be a quick laugh on Christmas Day, he thought. Instead, he was now in an entirely new reality with no way back. And I just sit there on on the couch and wait for the salvia trip to end. You know, I'm looking through old yearbooks, looking at pictures of myself, and it's, but it's real. He soon found himself adapting to this strange yet incredibly immersive life in Texas. Every day felt intensely real, from work at an apple orchard to the routine of meeting with friends, all of whom seemed to know him deeply. For eight years, Cantwell lived this life, slowly letting go of Alaska and accepting that he had somehow imagined his former existence. He joined a cover band, made friends, and settled into a new life that seemed permanent. Eventually, I slowly decided that I had imagined my entire family and my entire life. Then one day, just as he fully embraced his life in Tyler, Texas, something unexpected happened. While walking across a sunny park to meet his friends for lunch, the ground shifted beneath him. The grass turned into a whirlpool, pulling him down once again into a disorienting void. And for no reason, just I get that same feeling where my feet don't have, the molecules in my body don't have anything to do with the molecules on the ground. And I just find myself falling through the grass in, the, in this park. When he awoke, he was back in his Alaskan home, lying on the floor, his wife and friends standing over him, panicked. Only seconds had passed in reality. Just, I just could not believe the fact that I was back. I was actually in Alaska. And my, my wife, who I thought I had imagined, was there holding me. In shock, Cantwell took in his surroundings, realizing that everything was exactly as he left it before, taking that fateful hit. The Christmas decorations were still up and his family was still waiting, confused and worried. But to him, eight long years had passed. The memories of his life in Texas lingered vividly, as real to him as the cold air outside his Alaskan home. 
Grateful to be back, yet mourning a life that no one else could understand, Cantwell was left with a tangle of emotions, questions and doubts that still haunt him today. My friend and my ex-wife, their best estimate, 45 seconds. 45 seconds of having a, a seizure on the floor equated eight years, every minute of eight years in an imaginary version of Tyler, Texas. Here's some eerie CCTV footage coming out of Piedras, Colombia. It was posted to Reddit by user Chava300,000. It's 4.27 in the morning when security guards notice this strange light on their feet. Watching more closely, a person begins to appear. Responses have varied, with some commenters thinking it could just be a frame rate issue in the old security camera. However, the late hour at which it was caught and the eerie behaviour of the person has left some people speculating whether this is something more mysterious. On August 31st, 2024, NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore encountered something peculiar aboard Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, currently docked to the International Space Station. Wilmore reported hearing an eerie pulsating noise coming through the Starliner's speakers, which he described as strange. Take a listen. Strange noise coming through the speaker, and I didn't know if you could connect into the Starliner and let me uh, keep mic and let you hear. I don't, I don't know what what's making it, but uh, I don't know if it's something that maybe connected uh, between here and there, making that happen. But uh, his message to Mission Control in Houston set off a flurry of curiosity and speculation, especially as the sound was likened to a sonar ping or a rhythmic pulsing noise. The recording quickly made its way around social media after former Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield shared the clip to X. Hadfield noted, There are several noises I'd prefer not to hear inside of my spaceship, including this one that Boeing Starliner is now making. NASA has since responded with an official statement explaining that the noise was caused by an audio configuration issue between the space station and Starliner. According to NASA, the feedback has since ceased and the pulsing sound is now a thing of the past. The brief statement, however, left some observers unconvinced, feeling the explanation was both too vague and overly convenient. This lack of elaboration from NASA has fueled numerous theories online, with many speculating that the noise could be evidence of extraterrestrial contact. As always, the final interpretation rests with the audience, though many will be listening more closely for any further strange noises from space. A recent video titled UFO Fleet Over Russia, caught on camera by NASA, has ignited a flurry of debate over on Reddit, where it was first shared by user OKPeace4040. The clip appears to capture a mass of unidentified objects floating in space. Discovery also moving into sunrise. Many viewers of the clip expressed genuine intrigue, questioning what the strange objects could actually be. As it moves into sunrise, uh,
Some comments speculated about potential explanations ranging from extraterrestrial activity to natural phenomena, while others felt uncertain wanting official clarification. As of now, the sighting remains a complete mystery. Before we take a look at our last segment of the day, remember to hit that subscribe button, then tickle that little bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. That way you'll be in the loop every time we drop our scary and creepy videos. Also, if you want to see us more often in your feed, interact with our content, go over to our community tab, leave us a comment, and you're bound to see us more often in your feed. What in the ever living f is that? A fascinating new video has surfaced over on Reddit capturing an unusual and mesmerizing sighting of what user Puzzleheaded Sir5522 describes as a spinning spiral embryo portal looking thing in the sky. Oh my god. Like I'm not tripping, right? That's What is that? The post, shared on several communities dedicated to UAP discussions, reveals a video passed along by a friend, reportedly filmed somewhere along the west coast of the United States. Oh my god, that's so scary. What is that? I'm not even tripping. This sighting is particularly meaningful to the original poster who mentions this is the first time they've received personal evidence from someone they trust completely. What is that? The video quickly drew attention with viewers sharing theories and possible connections to similar phenomena. One commenter from northern Germany noted they had witnessed something almost identical over the weekend, though with an intriguing twist. Their sighting included six objects in a triangle formation, slightly more vibrant in colour than the video depicts here. This report has fueled speculation that such UAP sightings may not be isolated events, sparking more questions than answers. Oh my god. Like, I'm not tripping, right? That's. What is that? If you want to see some more scary video clips, then click that link on the top there. Otherwise, binge through our playlists right there. Now remember we live stream every weekend on a Friday night PST time. It's a lot of fun. Come and chat and meet the rest of the community. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. <gasps>